Hello, John Serrato here, coming to you with a Sunday morning sermon from the First Baptist Church in Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, pray that God will bless His Word to you. We've been we started a series on the Book of Daniel, uh, some tremendous historical events uh, that uh, were revealed uh, to Daniel and through Daniel and in his time. And it's just amazing when you uh, understand how God knows the future totally. Uh, we, we just can't comprehend such knowledge, such infinite omniscience, as they call it, where God actually knows the future. And the undeniable proof that God knows the future is when you read the Old Testament. Because there are things revealed in the Old Testament that, that everybody knows they were written hundreds of years before Christ. There's no denying it. I mean, it's a fact. And even the most unbelieving scholars have to admit that, that Daniel lived hundreds of years before Christ and that uh, Isaiah lived 700 years before Christ. And, and so uh, there's, there's no way to deny that the things that were written were written earlier. And in case there was... Any question, it seemed like it's toward the end of the 20th century when the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, it was obvious proof that some of the writings of Isaiah, which the Dead Sea uh, Scrolls contained, were written well before uh, the events that happened. And it just, there's no denying it that, that somebody knew ahead of time a lot of stuff that was going on. And that somebody, of course, is the Creator God. He, he, he is in time and beyond time. And he's, he's not only everywhere spatially, but he's everywhere temporally. That means he's in the future, he's in the past. He's a, we can't even begin to comprehend that. Uh, our human reason is locked into certain limitations, and, and there's no point in even trying to figure it out. But the thing is that it's just absolutely undeniable that the Word of God predicts clearly hundreds and hundreds of times things that no way could anybody know except it be God himself, and he revealed them to people individuals, humans, and it's uh, so obvious when you really study the Bible with an honest mind and an honest heart, it's just amazing, it's beautiful, and it's one of the great proofs that our God is not only real, but that he is interested in caring about every detail of his creation, and that's what the Bible says, and that includes you and me as individuals. That's, the, that's what it comes down to, to the comforting thing where uh, the Lord Jesus said, the hairs of your head are numbered. Now, why did he say that? That's, all, that's called hyperbole. It's, it's pur purposeful exaggeration. Jesus used it often, and, and, and he, he didn't mean technically, literally, that somebody counts it. No, he, he, what he's saying is God knows every detail of your life. And not only that, but he's a good, gracious God, and he cares. And if he cares for the little sparrow that falls, and not one sparrow can flip down to the ground without God knowing it. See, Jesus didn't use uh, $10 words. He just said it very simply. Uh, You're worth many sparrows. And he sees the sparrow that is so beautiful. And, and, and so uh, God knows all about it. And, and so when we read the book of Daniel... We have unfolded uh, centuries of history, uh, just unfolded before us, centuries of history, and they were revealed to Daniel before they occurred. That's the amazing thing, because Daniel starts off in the um, Babylonian Empire. And now, just a quick review, you remember that, that um, Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon, uh, he and his father, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, if I can say his word right, he, they, they conquered the uh, Assyrians and set up their own empire and replaced the Assyrian Empire, which was vast over the Middle East, and then they, they set up their Babylonian Empire. And Nebuchadnezzar was ruling the, the what was then the known world just about. Now there was a lot. There was China and there was England and other places that that 
the Babylonian Empire didn't cover, but but the, the the Bible centers on things that relate to Israel and and God's people in Israel. So we, we deal with the Babylonian Empire, which is it, it covered Turkey and uh, all of the Middle East now, down including Egypt, I guess. So anyway, so the Babylonian Empire, uh, w when when Babylon was uh, ruling the known world, Nebuchadnezzar. Um, he he set up a system where these countries that he conquered had to pay so much. It was just the way it was. They had to, you know, pay so much and respond and do what they were told. But and they were allowed a, a measure of freedom, and and so Israel uh, had already been taken away by the Assyrians, and now the, the Jews were in what what was called Judah. With Judah and and and, um, and Benjamin were the two last tribes left intact as a nation, and they were called the Southern Kingdom. And Jerusalem was the capital. Samaria, north of Jerusalem, had been the capital of Israel, which were the remaining tribes that had broken off uh, after um, after uh, uh, Solomon had passed away. So that's all past history, but up to now, what we have, where we come in now, right now, is Nebuchadnezzar had 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 put down a rebellion uh, by the Jews against the Babylonian Empire, and he went in and he took over Jerusalem. He, he, he destroyed a lot of it, tore, you know, tore down the walls and uh, destroyed the temple and did all kinds of all kinds of stuff and, and and but one of the things he did was he he took the best and the highest and the noblest uh, people, especially the young people, and he carted them off to Babylon, and that's the way they did it in those days. And 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 he took the finest, the young people, especially the young men, and and that had great potential to serve him, and he wanted to just get the best he could out of everybody for himself. So, and Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are four names of four young men who were taken captive when uh, Nebuchadnezzar took uh, uh, Jerusalem. And, and they were taken up into Babylon, and there they were trained for three years to serve the king. And there were many others beside those four, but those four were outstanding uh, because they, they stuck to the the obedience to the Lord and wouldn't defile themselves with uh, the things that the uh, pagans uh, did, in f especially in terms of food and stuff like that. So if you remember the story, uh, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself and, 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 and God gave him favor and he and his three f friends wound up serving the king. Uh, they they just outshone all the rest of the uh, young men that were trained. So they went to the king's court and they, they served the king. Now while they were there, they were there in, in and Daniel especially was was put in with what 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 we call the magicians or the wise men. Uh, th these are the counselors from a sort of a religious side that the king used to get answers to questions that he couldn't get, you know, just from regular advisors and stuff. So he had this whole class, and these this is the class from which the three wise men, if there was three of them, came to see Jesus centuries later when Jesus was born, and they saw the star, uh, and, uh, and then went and followed the star, and went to Jerusalem, and then to Bethlehem, and, and uh, saw, uh, saw the baby Jesus and worshipped him, and brought him gifts, and so forth, and they, these were astrologer types, and they read this heavens, and they had the heavens divided up into different countries and parts of the world, and they figured all kinds of stuff out, and some of it was real, some of it wasn't. It wasn't astronomy, it was astrology, and uh, there's still some of that around, which is a little, you know, but but uh, th th these guys were, were, were the, the cream, and and so and Daniel became one of them. And now, how much 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were involved in the astrology part, in, in the being wise men, it doesn't say, but it seems like at least they were very close to that. And, and I think they probably were part of that class. And, and uh, so what happened, as we saw last time, um, the um, king, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he met with them and he was very impressed and he hired them and had them working for him in the, ca in the palace, in, in the king's court. And, and then Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. Now here we see God working. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and, and he couldn't remember the details, and he couldn't remember the dream really, and, and, and yet it really upset him. And, and so he called for his wise men, for his astrologers, and uh, apparently Daniel wasn't with them for some reason. So he, there were probably some special ones that he called. And he said to them, I want you to tell me the dream I had and interpret it for me because it really has me upset. And, and they said, well, tell us the dream and we'll interpret it. And he said, no, if, if you really can interpret it, then you can tell me what the dream is. And they said, but that's not reasonable. He said, well, I'll tell you what, either you do it or I'm going to cut you to pieces. Nice guy. I'm going to cut you to pieces and destroy your houses, turn them into, um, you know, a place where you put excrement and dirt. <laughs> and, and, and he said, and, and they said, well, just tell us the dream. And he said, I don't remember the dream. And you're just stalling for time. And he freaked out and he said to, to his, uh, Ariok, his uh, guard, his uh, executioner, he said, I, I want these out. I want these guys killed. I want them all dead because they're all dead beats. They're false. They've deceived me before, and now they're trying to stall. He says, I, I, I want the whole class wiped out. We're going to start over. Now, I'm paraphrasing, of course. So Ariok says, okay. And he goes out, and the first thing he does is he sees Daniel, and he says, guess what, Daniel? He said, I've been ordered to kill all you guys. And Daniel said, why? And he said, well, the king had a dream, and he couldn't figure out what it was, and they, none of the guys could help. So he's freaked out, and he wants them all dead. And, and Daniel said, well, my goodness, wait. He says, Go, to tell the king to wait, to just give us a couple days, and we'll give him the answer. We will give him an answer. And so Ariok said, okay. So Daniel went back to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he said, guys, we we got to produce some praying. So they started to pray, and they cried to God and said, Lord, you got to show me this. And now Daniel had already had some experiences, obviously, with interpreting dreams like Joseph. Remember back in Genesis, Joseph interpreted dreams. Well, God gave this gift to Daniel. He had this incredible ability to uh, figure things out uh, way beyond human, and, and uh, he knew it was from the Lord, the Holy Spirit, where wisdom was upon him, and, and so they prayed, and they prayed for a couple days, and, 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 and it came to Daniel suddenly, just exactly what the dream was and exactly what it meant. God just put it in his mind, and he said, I know, I know what it is. So he told Ariok, tell the king I'm ready to tell him his dream. So Ariok goes to the King and he says, King, I found a man. <laughs> of course, I found a man who can interpret your dream. So Daniel's brought in and before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar was an awesome, awesome guy. I mean, he was scary and powerful. You don't rule an empire if you're just kind of a wimp, you know? So uh, he says to Daniel, can you interpret my dream? Can you tell me my dream and interpret my dream? And, and that's where we come into the scripture. So, so Daniel uh, said um, uh, to, um, to, uh, the, to the king, Daniel goes into the king and he, and he says, um, um, well, first of all, um, let me see. The secret, let, let's just go back a little bit. The secret, I'm going to read you how Daniel discovered the meaning of the dream. After they prayed, uh, the secret was revealed to Daniel. This is chapter 2, uh, verse uh, 19. He says, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So it's like a dream, or maybe he was awake, but he had this vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven 
in contrast to all the false gods that everybody else believed in in Babylon, the God of heaven, the true living God. And Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings, raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise, to those who are open to it and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals the deep, secret things, and he knows what is in the darkness. Light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, O God of my fathers, the God he was faithful to in this terrible, terrible environment. He says, you have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we asked of you. So, see, it was an answer to prayer. For you have made known to us the king's demand, which was to tell him what the dream was and interpret it. So he went to Ariok, as I said, and Ariok said, "Oh, I found this guy, and uh, he brought him in." And, uh, and 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 the king said to Daniel, "Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and its interpretation?" Now, he was already mad, and he was mad enough to kill all the wise men, so he wasn't very happy. And he was, I mean, he was wanting to know for sure, you know, is this guy, you know, another fraud or what? So he says, Daniel answered in the presence of the king. And that, and that, that, and that implies courage. That implies he stood up to the king, not in an insulting way, no, in a respectful way, but he stood even with the king. And he says to him, the secrets, the secret, no, I'm sorry, the secret which the king has demanded of the wise men, the astrologers and the magicians and the soothsayers that cannot declare it to the king, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secret things, and he has made known to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what will be in the latter days, and by that he means in the future, in the next few centuries, actually, the, the latter days of his life and, and the future. And he says, your dream and the visions of your head upon your bed were these. Now, when he says the latter days, he's talking about the next few empires that are going to come up, and we'll look at that in, in, in a few minutes, but, but it also goes to the very end of history, because when we read later, we see that this vision is, the last part of the vision goes to the end of history, to today, almost. In fact, yes, to today. So he says, he says, um, God has made known to the king, uh, in your dream and the visions of your head and upon your bed, this is it. He says, as for you, O king, thoughts came to your mind uh, on your bed and what would come to pass after this. So God is, he says, God is revealing the future to you, king. This dream is not about today, it's about the future. It starts today, but it's about the future. And he says, things that are going to come to pass after this. And he who reveals secrets has made known to you what will be, what's going to happen. Then he says, but as for me, now here's beautiful that Daniel is so real. He says, as for me, this secret has not been revealed to me because I have more wisdom than anyone else humility, honesty, integrity, but for your sakes who make known the interpretation to the king, for our sakes, the, the, the wise men, to the king, that you may know the thoughts of your own heart, which he couldn't remember, and <laughs> turned into a dream. So then he says, you king were watching, and behold, a great image, a great image. So he begins to describe the dream. And he describes this great image. And I'm not going to read the details, but I'll just tell them to you. He, he says, there was this huge image. And, and, and of course, the king probably immediately remembered. It probably popped into his head. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. 
a great image. And he said this image had all kinds of, uh, uh, of, of parts of the, made of certain elements. And he says the head of this image was pure gold. And then he said the shoulders and chest and arms were silver. And then he said, when you get a little lower into his abdomen and down around his thighs, it was brass. And then the legs were iron. And then he said, and the feet were a mixture of iron and clay. Now, what an incredible picture uh, Daniel gives uh, to Nebuchadnezzar. And he just probably lit up and said, that's it. I remember, that's it. That was it. I saw this image. That's what it was. And then Daniel says, well, let me just tell you what it means. Here's what it means. God is showing you the empires of the future. And he says, you're the head of pure gold. That's the Babylonian empire. And he said, after you is coming uh, a, an, another empire. And it's the Medes and the Persians. He didn't particularly say that, but he says another empire that was, it turned out to be the Medes and the Persians who took over Babylon after, you know, lots of years after Nebuchadnezzar, several years after Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, he passed away and his son took over and his grandson and his grandson Belshazzar was a bad guy and they lost the empire to the Medes and the Persians. And that was the silver part of the image. And then he said, but after that, there's coming another empire. The Medes and the Persians are going to go down, and there's going to come another empire. And, and, it, and it's, it's, he later describes it to a T, that, it, that it's broken up into three parts and this and that. And it's Alexander the Great, so obviously, so obviously, 500 years before Christ, he spells out what happened to Alexander, died in 33, and his empire was divided up. So, but that's later. But here he says, so there's this other empire that rises up. And, and, and that's the, that's the uh, brass. And then he said, then there comes this terrible empire powerful empire, so strong. He says, um, it's iron, and, 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 and yet it, 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 is, it, it splits in two, and, and it's made of iron and, and clay, and, and that's the Roman Empire that split in two many, many centuries, thousands of years later, several thousand years later. So, so it was amazing, not several thousand, hundreds of years later, but, but it was amazing how that when you read this and you know that Daniel wrote this way before it happened, there's no question about it. People try to say, oh, he must have written it later. Well, it doesn't matter. It was, even if it was only 100 years earlier, it's before anybody knew it. But it was way before that. It was maybe four or 500 years. And he spells out history to come for Nebuchadnezzar. Amazing. Now, the thing is that these, these empires, he says, while each one was powerful, it seemed that they were reduced in quality as they as we they went. In other words, you're the head of gold, and then there's silver, and then there's brass, and then there's iron, and there's clay. So it was kind of a a, a qualitative uh, loss through history, and it's true. It's true. Uh, by the time you get down to Rome. Uh, you know, how Rome ended up, it was horrible, and so forth. And, of course, uh, you know, uh, the Greeks uh, with uh, Alexander was kind of messed up. But, but the point is this, that, that, that they got, they got uh, through history, and then and the key was this, that at the end of Daniel's dissertation, spelling out these empires, he then says, but there is a stone, a huge stone cut out, not made by human hands. And here's the picture now. He's given, he says, here it is, Nebuchadnezzar. There's this, this image, gold, silver, brass, iron, clay. There it is. And there's this huge stone, not human. And it comes and it crushes them all, crushes them all from the top to the bottom turns of the dust, blows them away, 
and is set up forever. And of course, he's talking about the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom of God. He's talking about the, the, the church and, and God's people forever. And it spells it out. He spells it out. This stone, not human, it's from God. It's, and, it, and it says, it will rule a whole earth. The rest of them only ruled a little part of the earth, relatively speaking, the Middle East and that area. He says, this one is number one. It's going to rule the whole earth. And he says, and forever and ever. Unlike the previous ones that ruled part of the earth and went down, each one succeeding each one, this one is forever. God has got a plan, and he's revealed it to you in Nebuchadnezzar. It's wonderful. We love it. You should read Daniel, in a, in a, just read the book of Daniel and think about it and, and see how God has revealed these tremendous things. Now, the thing is that after this, Nebuchadnezzar was so impressed with God, was so impressed with, with, with the God of, of Daniel that he just... He just, it was, he, now let me just jump ahead. Many, many years later, after the church was in existence and the Roman Empire was almost at the very end, they, the, the Christians of the, of, of the early church were so powerful and so vast and so spread out all over the known world that, that Christianity had to be tolerated. They'd been persecuting it for centuries, and now all of a sudden it just blossomed. It kept blossoming. So they, there was what they call an edict of toleration by the Roman emperor. And then later there was an edict of establishment. So first they tolerated Christianity, then they established it. That's exactly what happened. We'll see that next time. Nebuchadnezzar set up sort of an edict of, a, of, of toleration. Uh, and, and said, all right, this, this God is real, he, he's, he's, he's the true God, uh, we don't want to do anything against him. But he didn't, do, he didn't set him up as, as God for the empire. He did that later, after another experience he had, but he, that, we're jumping ahead. But so anyway, the point is that, that God used this, this dream and this, this very dangerous time where almost... Daniel and his friends and almost all the and all the other wise men were almost put to death, and and this crisis, this terrible crisis, this dream and all, he used all that to reveal himself, not only through Daniel and to Daniel, but to Nebuchadnezzar, and he began to reveal himself to that that kingdom and that empire, and little by little he revealed himself more and more, and I believe Nebuchadnezzar came to faith in the living and the true God. We'll see that later, okay? But how God works so wonderfully. Now, how does that apply to you and me? Well, Daniel and his friends were absolutely uncompromisingly faithful to the Lord, and, and they went through all kinds of trouble. We said, you know, the fire and the lions, that's the title of this, these messages. And we're going to see the next time uh, the, the, the three children, you know, have, go through the fire. But that, again, brings about the, a greater revelation of the true God to the, to the empire. And then we see Daniel and the lion's den, and then, and then God used that for the, uh, the, the Persians. So, so we see God uses pressures, problems, troubles, things that first seem hopeless, and if we're faithful like Daniel, and, and we pray and seek the Lord, he will work out our own little situations, which are very small compared to Daniel's and so many. But he will bless you and work and, and use us to uh, show people that the Lord is real and that he loves them and he wants to save them and give them eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are the ruler, you are the, you are the king of kings, the Lord of lords, you are the rock that is going to replace all man's efforts and all man's kingdoms and set up your glorious kingdom forever. And God, thank you that you have promised us a place in it. Thank you for your mercy and your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. With the sound of strange symbols and heart, we praise you. We praise you.
praise you with the timbrel and dance and shouts to you Yeah.